Hello the internet, my name is Dean and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails tutorial. This one's going to be covering using active storage for video uploads. So we're going to do something a little bit different for this one. We're not only going to do video uploads, we're also going to do a thumbnail system similar to YouTube. And we're going to use the video.js framework so that we can customize things a little bit. I'll try to cover some of the examples, but let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start by generating a scaffold. So we're gonna type Rails G scaffold. We'll call it a video. We'll give the video a title and a description. The description will be of type text. And I think that's about it. While that's running, we can come over to our config and our routes.rb and we can say root two colon and videos index. And we can save that. Then we can come up to our app assets style sheets and realize that this didn't run because of spring. So we'll just close this and open up a new session. MNT slash D slash sites, YouTube, YouTube. Okay, so spring stop. You shouldn't have to do this. This is just an interesting problem that I've been running into. Rails G scaffold, video, uh, title, description, text. Hopefully that runs this time. Um, that did. So now we can delete the scaffolds.scss file. This is all set up. Let's do a Rails active underscore storage colon install. That'll install the active storage and then we can do a Rails DB colon migrate to migrate the database. And then we can type Rails S to start the server. And this should all take us to the home page, hopefully. And there we go. So if we click on new video, there is of course no ability to actually upload the video yet. So let's change that. We'll start by going into the models video.rb and then we'll say has one attached and then uh, colon, uh, let's call it a clip. That way it's easier to differentiate what we're referring to. And then we'll also say has one attached thumbnail. So we can now come over to our controllers and our videos controller, and then we can scroll down to the video params and after description, we'll add in a comma and then a colon clip, another comma, and then a colon thumbnail. And just as a bit of an aside, if you, for example, wanted to include multiple thumbnails, you would change this thumbnail to thumbnail colon and then just an empty array, and that would allow it to accept more than one. And you would change the model to say has many attached thumbnails. And then in the views, what we're about to do right now, you would div.field equal form.label clip form.file underscore field clip. And then we can just copy these two paste them down and then say thumbnail. If this was for multiple thumbnails, you would just type as multiple, I believe. But since we're only doing one, we'll leave it like this. So now we just have to go to our show page and we'll do the thumbnail first. So we'll just say uh, image underscore tag at video dot thumbnail and that will allow us to preview the thumbnail. And then we can also do, uh, well, let's just do the thumbnail for now. So test uh, description. And I actually have the files that I'd like to upload right here. So I'm gonna upload my device user accounts thumbnail. And I'm going to upload my intro because that's only seven megabytes. So that'll go a bit quicker. So we can hit create video. And then our thumbnail is of course massive as per usual. So we'll just force it to resize. We'll say div style equals width 400 pixels, height 400 pixels. Then we'll close that at the bottom of the image and refresh and nothing changed. So now we'll come into the image tag and we'll put in a comma. Then we'll say style width 100% height auto and that should force it to resize itself. And there we go. So now below that, let's go ahead and let's make this video appear. So we can start with just a video underscore tag at video dot video. 
and we can see if that'll work. So we do that, we refresh, and then it says, oh, it's uh, at video.clip, sorry. So we do that, and then it says the asset blank is not preset in the asset pipeline. Well, the reason for that is we need a URL for wrapped around this video clip, because we need to get the actual URL of this asset that is the video clip. So once that's done, we now have a massive video with a similar problem to the last one. So let's see if we can force this to resize itself. So outside of the URL for, but inside of the video tag, I'll do the same thing where I say style colon, and then I give it a width of 100% and a height of auto. And then I refresh and I hope for the best. Okay, cool. So we have what appears to be the first frame of the video. If I come back to the videos and double click on the intro and drag it over here, you can see that hopefully the very first frame, Jesus, hopefully the very first frame is what we're seeing right there. And it looks similar. So why can't I do anything? Well, if I right click, I can see that I can show controls, but I can also open the video in a new tab. So if I do that, and that's a little deafening, if I do that, you can see that it opens up a player where we can do everything, including download the video. But what if we want to see these controls on the other page? Well, for that, we can either right click and hit show controls. That's one option. Alternatively, we can come to the video clip. And again, after the styles, we'll just say, I believe it's controls colon and then just an empty string. And then if we refresh, those options are available. If I get rid of that and I refresh, they're gone. And if I put them back and refresh, they are here. We can full screen and all that goodness. Okay, so how do we incorporate the video.js thing? Okay, apparently my recording cut out there. So we're going to now switch from using the default player that we have right here to using this video.js player. Uh, you can find this anywhere online, really. Just Google video.js or Google an alternative player and do something similar to what we're about to attempt. So to get started, I just headed over, or I just went over to their getting started page and their download page. And I went down to their uh, sample. So for this, they gave a, uh, a style sheet and a script. So I'm just gonna throw both of those in here. And then I'm going to grab the script at the bottom and I'll just paste this one all the way at the bottom. The final step after we have all of that is to just grab this entire video block right here and we'll just paste this below our current video player. So if we do that and then we refresh, we should get a couple errors over here. And if we scroll down, we can see that our new video player is up, but it is, uh, it's not working. And the reason for that is these sources are set to their, their video, which we don't have access to. So let's get rid of one of these sources and let's get rid of this P tag. Inside of this uh, video ID where the poster is, we're going to get rid of the poster and we'll set this to be equal to the URL for our at video dot thumbnail. And then if we refresh, that gives us our thumbnail. You can see we have an error here telling us we can't do anything. That's fine. Now for the source, again, this video, if I right click it and hit properties, this is an MP4. So obviously make sure that you're not trying to do this with a different format of video make sure that this matches. So I'm going to uh, throw in some Ruby code here and I'll say URL underscore four at video dot clip. And then I'll close the parentheses. And if you if you want to go through the validation to make sure that the user is uploading the proper oops, that's a typo to make sure the user is uploading the proper type of files, I do have a tutorial covering uh, file validation, which I can link to and I'll also throw in a card or something for you guys. So I'm going to save this again because apparently I already did that. And then I'm going to head over to my browser and I'm going to refresh. So now I have a working play button. Just as a note for that, I did have to hit Control and F5 to force the refresh. I don't know why it didn't work initially, but I'm assuming that's something to do with turbo links. So that is working. If I'm not mistaken, there is an option to use or to, yeah, the uh, Video.js plugins. And this is just a massive page of all the good plugins that you could ever want for this really either way there is a method of uh changing where the play button is to center it and making it a bigger play button but if we hit play right now 
you can see that the video is playing as you would expect. You can full screen it and it's done through this custom player rather than through the default player. And of course, we still have our thumbnail and all that good stuff. So that about does it for this tutorial. Uh, you know, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover with active storage, just leave me a comment. If this video helped, please remember to like it. If this video didn't help, remember to dislike it so that other people know not to watch my tutorial. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.